We start with our top story in the business world. The U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke spoke today, and traders did not like what he had to say. We have got full coverage on this. Daniel Renches is here in Washington, D.C. with me. Michelle McCory is in New York City with Wall Street's reaction. First, let's get to Daniel Renches with the details of what Ben Bernanke said and what the Fed plans to do in the future. Well, the men and the women who make up U.S. monetary policy are pretty upbeat about the prospects for the world's biggest economy. The Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke isn't ready to slam the brakes on stimulus just yet. Wall Street investors have been nervously eyeing this building on Constitution Avenue in Washington, D.C., home of the Federal Reserve. Bankers and traders have been enjoying the benefits of cheap money generated by the stimulus policies of the Federal Open Markets Committee. Big investors have been concerned that this flow of inexpensive capital could slow down if the economy started looking too good. And indeed, the Fed has revised upwards estimates for jobs growth in 2013, 2014 and 2015 as the data has improved. Job gains, along with the strengthening housing market, have in turn contributed to increases in consumer confidence and supported household spending. The street got a double dose of good news from Bernanke, an improved outlook for the U.S. economy and no let up in the Fed's monthly purchases of $85 billion in U.S. Treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities. Based on current projections, the ultra-low federal funds rate will stay that low until late 2015 and maybe longer than that. Even if the Fed begins scaling back on its buying spree in the coming months, Bernanke says the Fed won't be selling the $3 trillion plus of assets already purchased. To use the analogy of driving an automobile, any slowing in the pace of purchases will be akin to letting up a bit on the gas pedal as the car picks up speed, not to beginning to apply the brakes. So with U.S. inflation still at very low levels, Ben Bernanke is keeping his foot on the gas pedal for a while longer, even with a better road ahead. But this isn't set in stone at the moment. If economic conditions worsen or improve, Ben Bernanke says the Fed will be ready to enact changes accordingly, adapting to any new realities. Now, for the market reaction in New York, we head to Michelle McCory. How are things looking there? Well, the U.S. markets tanked after Chairman Bernanke's press conference. The Federal Reserve said it will maintain its bond buying program, but afterwards at the press conference, Chairman Bernanke hinted that the Fed plans to wind down purchases later this year and the sell-off accelerated in the final hours of trading with all three averages ending deeply in the red. The Dow and the S&P 500 both plunged 1.4%. The Nasdaq fell 1.1%. Now, the Fed stimulus has been seen as fueling the equity rally and Bernanke implied that the bond buying party may be over by the middle of next year. Still, some shares bucked the trend. Shares of Adobe Systems rose 5.6% after the maker of a Photoshop and Acrobat software reported a higher than expected adjusted quarterly profit. And FedEx also reported a higher than expected quarterly profit as its ground shipment business improved. Shares were up about 1.1%. Now, the shipping giant is seen as a bellwether since it connects so many different parts of the business supply chain. And Dell traded more or less flat after billionaire investor Carl Icahn promised shareholders that the company would buy back up to $16 billion of stock if they join his move to stop Michael Dell and Silver Lake Partners' proposal to take the firm private. Still, all S&P sectors closed firmly lower and the big takeaway for the market, Bernanke saying that if the economy continues to improve, the asset purchasing program could start winding down towards the end of this year and could, in fact, wrap up by the middle of next year. So let's get more insight and analysis with Phil in D.C. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. You're right. We've got much more to come on it. And we're going to try to analyze what Ben Bernanke actually said. And we've now got Joe Minerick. He's the senior vice president for the Committee for Economic Development here in Washington with us in Chicago. We are joined by Sean Lust, the director of Commercial Hedging Division at Walsh Trading. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I might also add, Daniel Renches joins us back here on the desk as well. Let me start with Chicago. Sean, are you surprised by the news today? No, I'm not surprised. I think, uh, I think one of the things the Fed wants to stay, from, stay away from is an asset bubble. Uh, so far this year, the stock indices, stock market has been the investment of choice. Good news, bad news, no news. We've traded higher. 
this all had to come to an end at some point. Not saying it's ending, but if the data, like Bernanke said, improves, then I think we'll see a small scale back to a complete elimination of uh, the QE3 program. This is three rounds of QE. Uh, it's been a couple years in the works. Um, the debate will go on whether it's worked or not, but it wasn't a surprise to me. All right, let me bring Joe into the conversation. You've been a Fed watcher for, for, for a long time. <laughs> You know how to read the tea leaves from this. Is the market overreacting? I mean, Michelle was talking about the Dow down 200 points. It's one of the worst days, you know, in over a year, a year or two for the market. I mean, this is, the market's really scared of what's, what could happen. Are they overreacting? And, and at the moment, just if I may interject, it seems a little bit infantile. For everybody out there, it just seems practical. We've had the stimulus for so long, and yet the market is being so, seemingly a little bit infantile about this. What do you think? Well, the reactions, are very strong. Now, of course, we had a strong up day yesterday. I, this is, they don't call these extraordinary measures for nothing. I mean, it, we are in an extraordinary time. Uh, the Fed is undertaking policy that it hasn't uh, followed uh, in history. Uh, yes, I think the markets are overreacting somewhat. I do think that the Fed is trying to signal that it is being very data conscious. Uh, we did have uh, a little bit more strengthening in their forecast than I think people expected, and then I think may be justified. We'll it, have it, to see where it goes. Is this an issue as we go forward? Because Ben Bernanke says if the data supports the Fed's assumptions, and if meaning that, I'm assuming, that if we get bad news on the economy, then that means that would delay the so-called tapering. Does bad news become good news? Uh, it depends on whether you think that uh, QE is uh, the tail or the dog. Uh, you know, there is, uh, I think Daniel's right, there's a tremendous amount of knee-jerking reflex reaction going on here. Eventually, we've got to get back to the point where we're being economy-driven rather than Fed-driven. You know, something that's very interesting, Daniel and Joe, that has come up is, as I watched the market decline today, I was also closely watching the yield curve. The 10-year is now at 230. It may not mean a lot to a lot of people, but a lot of home mortgages are based upon the five and 10 years in terms of the treasury markets. And Sean, I want to ask you, are you watching what those yield curves are doing? Does a steepening of a yield curve, is this, is this good news? Is this bad news? Well, we don't know yet. I think it's, um, we got to get off this QE3 track eventually. I don't think you can print your way out of this problem and just, you know, the Fed can wave a wand and everything's going to be okay. Unfor uh, central banks around the world have adopted the same measures. Um, I, I think rates eventually have to rise for more of a healthy economy. Um, you know, so I think it's more of a healthy thing. Uh, it might spur some more bank lending. We're just starting to see the real estate markets kind of kick in the gear here with uh, some of the government programs like HARP and HAMP, letting people refinance. And th those are the things that really need to get going to get this economy back on foot and drive unemployment, which Talk, the Fed ultimately wants, talking about below 6.5%. That, uh, talking about that, um, I just want to put this point. Now, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke today alluded to the underlying strength of the U.S. economy, saying that despite the CBO saying 1.5% is coming off the economy this year because of the fiscal restraint of Capitol Hill, nonetheless, he's suggesting that there's an underlying strength. But is this the tail or the dog being wagged here? Does the Fed basically hold a, an overstimulated economy once again in its, in its hands? Or is there a fundamental strength in the American economy we can all be happy about? Uh, well, I, I hope so. I mean, I, I think that we've seen this before from the Fed. Uh, last February in 2012, they said, the, you know, Bernanke went in front of congressional testimony, in, or in front of Congress uh, for that matter, and said things are starting to get better. You could see, uh, you know, a wind down of the QE2 and, and this, that, and the other thing. And what did we see? A few months later, unemployment got worse, and all of a sudden we had QE3 later in the year. We saw commodity prices shoot back up, gold, oil, for example. Um, you know, one thing Bernanke hasn't had is any help from Washington as far as from the, from the executive level or from Congress trying to make, um, you know, some budgetary cuts uh, along with Medicare and some other things. So I mean, he's, he's Obama, really been doing it on his own. Sean, Obama's got his hands full, but there's a very big impact. And, and, and guys, all, all of you, look at what's happening in Asia. Look at what's happening in Brazil. Look at what's happening around the world in emerging markets. Markets are in panic. They, the 
Japanese Nikkei is down over 20%. The Shanghai markets are down. Hong Kong is going to open very shortly from now. They're all reacting to this carry trade. I just want to point out to our, to our viewers, the carry trade is borrowing U.S. dollars, essentially, and going long or, or betting for emerging markets. This could unwind that entire process that's been in the last couple of years. How is this going to affect the rest of the world, Joe? Uh, it's not good news. Uh, I think Daniel made a good point a moment ago. Here we have an economic outlook in the United States that we're saying is stronger in part because of housing. The market reaction has rates going up here at the long end, which is going to make housing finance more expensive. Is that housing recovery, which is extremely important to the U.S. economy because it was so important on the downside, going to in fact materialize? If it doesn't materialize, then you're going to continue to have the opportunity to borrow cheap in the United States but that's not good for the U.S. economy. So is housing overcooked? So that's an important question for that, everyone out there. That's a whole nother pound discussion. <laughs> yes. I have one more question for you, Sean. You, you, you're an expert at making money. As you look around the world in the commodities world, what would your trade be? How would you make money from this decision from the Fed today? Well, uh, I'd be watching the data. First, I'd be watching what the next jobs report is, and then we'll see we'll see what that number is. Now, if it's just kind of status quo and the next couple of jobs data, you know, the jobs announcements, because that's really what the Fed is watching, you know, besides some of the retail numbers, you know, I'd be watching what that meant for the dollar and then acting conversely off that. Uh, if it's better economic data, um, better jobs numbers, I'd be shorting the precious metals. Obviously, if it was conversely, I, I would be starting, you know, more of a commodity-based rally once again. If, if QE3, QE3 was going to stay longer, I'd be buying grains, energies, and metals. But, Sean you know, I Lusk. I to see what the dollar's doing. Sean Lusk out of Chicago. Thank you very much. Daniel Wrench is here in Washington. And, of course, our guest, Joe Minerick. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you for your discussion. Much more to come on this topic over the next days and weeks ahead.